Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about this Winter Well stainless steel collapsible wood stove top oven. And it can be used on several different surfaces. So first let me talk about why I went ahead and made this investment. Even though right back here in this corner you can see I have that camp oven that I bought quite a number of years ago. We bought it as a backup for me to have an oven to bake in since we do have a wood stove but we don't have a wood stove oven and I do a lot of cooking and baking on top of the wood stove there's quite a bit you can do but there's some things that are just better to have a fully enclosed oven type area in order to get things to brown on top such as biscuits breads pies and so on and even though this back here is really nice to have and I have a video on it that's older I'll link to down below where I was baking bread in it the drawback to it is it does rely on propane and I have it parked over here because it's right next to a sliding glass door that's in this room so I can crack that door open to get good ventilation while I'm running it. But since in the winter time we always have a good hot fire going in the wood stove, I wanted something I could use on there and I'd only recently discovered this and I was pretty excited about it. And by the way, this is a lot cheaper to get this if you already have a wood stove than getting something like that. I'd still recommend the camp oven for those to have as a backup cooking and baking source because it does also have burners on top if you don't have any other way to cook or bake like maybe a lot of people already have a propane range which is great you have something to fall back on to cook and bake with in the event of a power outage but if you your range runs off electricity then it's a good idea to have some other options and that right there if you don't have a wood stove i think is a great option because you're taking care of your oven as well as your stove top burners in one purchase and i'll go ahead and link to it down below i don't think the red is available anymore and i'll also link to this as well i want to talk first about why i went ahead and purchased this even though i have very uh, many other ways to cook and bake off grid not just this back here but there's also barbecuers you can even bake on a barbecuer a lot of you know we have solar power but in the winter time which is when we have most of our power outages we can't rely fully on the solar power especially for something that's going to draw a lot of electricity like running an oven and so it's really nice for us to have other options to rely on and this one right here is going to i definitely will see myself using this a lot more than i'll ever use that because i already have a fire going when i need something like this in the summertime i can just plug my toaster oven into the solar power and bake stuff in there but when we have fires going it makes sense if i really need to bake something to go ahead and do it in this rather than wasting the propane and having to come back in here because our wood stove is in the other room so that was one of the main reasons I did this. I did measure it before I bought it. Now you can see our wood stove setup is a little different than maybe some people's. We do have a freestanding wood stove. Initially that fireplace was just your standard everyday fireplace that was put in houses that were built in the mid 60s. And somewhere along the way, a wood stove insert was put in there. Now I talk about wood stoves, the pros and cons of that, the inserts and freestanding and the differences in a separate video that I'll link to down below so the the having the insert was nice but having a freestanding wood stove is a lot better if you can do it because you actually have cooking surface some of your inserts will have a little bit but most don't have any but you also can get more heat efficiency so we had a mason come and redo the brickwork in order to get the biggest wood stove we could get in there freestanding as possible and so that's why you see that archway it's you know he was working with the existing fireplace and it looks nice and i like it but the problem with the archway is it can kind of limit some of the space in there the thing i like about it is it helps hold more heat into that area for when i'm baking but it can be tricky when you have taller pans and something like this is sitting there. So as you can see in the images, this actually fits perfect. And I push it right up against the stovepipe. 
and yet I still have space on either side of the oven to put my coffee pot and then to also keep my big pot of water that I always have sitting there. That's the water I use through the winter time to wash the dishes with so I don't have to rely on the public power for the hot water for that. And then in the case of an, a long-term power outage, we can use that same water for washing up with once we use up all the water out of the hot water tank. So anyway, it's really important for me to be able to have all that stuff going. And on top of that, with that, in that image behind the coffee pot and that pot of water, there's still space back there that I can have a roasting pan on one side or even on both sides. I can have stuff going on on the back. It's just you'd have to pull things out to be able to get to it. Anyway, this has been the perfect fit as far as that goes. Now let me talk a little bit more about some of the pros before I talk about the cons. And one of the things is this is, though I plan on leaving it set up all the time because I do have a place to set it next to the wood stove where it's out of the way when I don't need it, but this is collapsible. It's totally foldable because this is made to take camping if you need to. So it actually is made to go with the Winterwell stove, which we plan on getting as well, the stainless steel stove. It's often called a tent stove, but it can be used outside as well and in other small spaces. For this, you just set it right on top of that. And then the same thing goes with your wood stove. You can also use this on a camp stove on top of a barbecuer. So you have several options with this. It doesn't have to be limited to just using on a wood stove. You can even use it over an open fire. You have to just be careful where the height you set it at and what you're baking in. Now you want to keep in mind that the bottom of it, you're going to hear some knocking around as I turn this, is simply just mesh. It's going to look a little dirty on the bottom because I've already been baking in it quite a bit. It's not really dirty, it's just been discolored from the heat. So that's just mesh right there. And that is to allow the heat to actually come up into the oven. But if you're using it over an open fire, that could be too much heat. You want to be careful about where you set it. Now let me talk about a couple of other options. You'll see a couple of cake pans in here. I'll explain that in a minute. It does actually come with two racks. So you can actually have something baking here and something baking here at the same time. You can see it comes with the thermostat so you can keep track of what the heat is, which is definitely very handy. So right here I'm going to show you a clip of me assembling this and most of it is all one piece. The bottom, the, the door, the sides, they're all connected. The rack and the top of it are the only parts that are actually separate. And as you can see in the video, it actually goes together pretty simple. And so if it's something that you don't want to leave set up, you can simply just fold it back up and then put it out of the way. Once all folded up, if I wanted to, I could actually stick it in the little space between the wood stove and the brickwork and have it completely out of the way if I needed to. And you can see here, I'll show you a little close up now of how these hooks work. They just slide in here like this. That's how you hook it all together. So now let me talk a little bit about the cons. Though it's really nice to have the glass and it is helpful, what I found at least in my situation is that the glass does fog up a little bit and it can make it a little hard to see in there. And it's already pretty dark in our living room as it is, so I did have to use a flashlight. And the thing is, is you don't want to keep opening the door because it can take a while, depending on the source, to get it heated up to the temperature that you wanted. Now, the hottest we were able to get it with a rip-roaring hot fire in the wood stove was 325 degrees, which is plenty hot. I did a lot of the bacon on, baking on a lower heat than that, though, which means that it took long longer to bake the items, so you got to think ahead. So far I've only done several batches of biscuits and two batches of bread. And so I had to figure out some tricks when it comes to that. Now having the two racks is really nice and you can actually take them out through the door with a little jostling around here. They're not super strong. So if you're using a cast iron pan, like I like to use a cast iron bread pan, and while it will hold it, it does tend to bend the rack a little bit as it's sitting on there but what i did was i used the first time i used two of these because you can stack both of these on top of each other and then increase the strength of the rack itself and so that it doesn't bow so much when you're using it but what i then did is you can see i've got these old cake pans i never actually bake in anymore 
And so I keep them because they have many other uses. And this, I do the same thing in the other oven to lift the things up. So this one here sits down here just as an added support under this for when I'm using a heavier cast iron pan. And then the other one is for baking the bread on. So I need to actually set the bread up higher. I can't set my bread pan that I like to use up here because the pan itself is too tall. I can't get it into this space right here. It might fit in there once it's in there, but even so it still sits up too high. And I think the bread, once it's risen, would be touching the top of that. And I don't want that. Where having the bread here on this has, puts it at just the right setting. So when I put the first batch of bread I did, I set it on down here with the double rack and it just would not get brown on top. It baked just fine, but the bottom got really brown and the top didn't get brown at all. So by putting the cake pan in here, I was able to lift that up so the, the bottom wouldn't brown as quickly, but I would have the heat radiating from the top. And that's what you need to be able to get your things to brown on top. So by lifting that, elevating that more, I was able to get the bread to brown pretty good on top. Not as brown as I normally like it, but here's a picture of the bread right here. It actually turned out really good. It was still had the right, the perfect texture to the crust on the top, even though I would have preferred to have a nicer color. The texture of the crust all the way around in the cast iron pan and then on the top was perfect. And and as was the texture of the bread on the inside as well. And then with the biscuits, I found this to be perfect for baking the biscuits on. To be able to get it closer to the top, I don't need to put them in as tall of a pan, though I do bake them in that pan sometimes. A lot of times I'm only doing a few biscuits at a time, so I can set that little skillet with the biscuits in it right here, and that worked really good to get a nice even a pretty even brownness of that but it took me three tries of figuring out what was the right height so just like anything else anytime you're looking at trying a new cook source it's always going to be a learning curve it's a learning curve with that it's a learning curve with this it doesn't matter what it is it's a learning curve just cooking on top of wood stove in the first place but i've been doing that for i don't know at least 20 years or so now uh, I'm pretty sure it's been longer than that. However long that we've had the wood stove in there. The other downfall is that every part of this, including this little ring, will get very hot. So you do need some of gloves or something. Of gloves are going to be easier when you're talking about this, especially if you, you need to move this at all when it's hot. So that was one of the one of the other downfalls, but it's just to be expected. I mean, that's going to be just about anything. But you also have to consider the, the way it's made, it's made to be also portable. So they couldn't put a whole bunch of fancy stuff on there and have it, and then it would be too heavy. So for someone who's wanting to take something like this camping, this is going to be more ideal. For me, it was ideal because of the, the size of it. it was absolutely perfect. I have yet to bake a pie in it. I will try it eventually. I'm a little more nervous about the pie, but I'll definitely be putting the pie on this top rack here when I go to bake it for certain. But all in all, uh, I'm very happy with this. I, I wish I would have found something like this a lot sooner. We were considering maybe building something like this for ourselves to go with the wood stove. It would actually be more ideal if we had something that could actually wrap around the stove pipe but and they do make some like that but the problem with that is it then would cut into the space i would not be able to fit the pans in there so really just learning how to work with this and making sure you have i have a good hot fire going so I, I what i do is i put this on the wood stove at least a half an hour before and open everything up on the wood stove i even crack the door open a little bit just to make sure i get a rip roaring fire going and get it really hot while i'm making the bread or the biscuits or whatever so it's all heated up and ready to go when I go to bake the items. And again, since you're most likely looking at baking at a lower heat, just add some extra time on there because it might take an hour to bake a loaf of bread that would normally take a half an hour and maybe 40 minutes to bake the biscuits that might only take 20 in a conventional electric oven. So you just got to plan that out. But the more you work with this stuff, the the better you'll get at it and you'll figure out the tricks just like I've been doing for years with cooking and baking on top of my wood stove. 
And I'm always figuring out new little tricks when it comes to that. And if you're interested in more information on how I cook on top of wood stove, I'll link to that video down below as well. So all in all, to me, this was worth the purchase. But if you don't have a wood stove, I'm not sure that it would be worth the purchase. It might be if you already have a camp stove that you can put this on or a barbecuer. But if you don't have any of those things, again, I'm going to fall back on the, if you're looking for something that kind of was going to cover all your needs, I'd recommend going with that camp stove there. But if you have a wood stove or other things you can put this on, I do recommend this. Just realize that there is going to be a learning curve when it comes to that. All right. So I just remembered something. I want to lower this rack right down on here on top of this pan on top of this pan so there's lots of support there and the other thing I was going to try before I started shooting the video and I forgot was to see if I could not only fit this regular bread pan but if I could fit two side by side look at that plenty of room for two bread pans just like in my toaster oven now I have my square bread pan I typically use for making my bread but let's say if I'm doing sweet breads usually I'm going to do two loaves of bread I need two of these pans so look at that it fits in there perfect and I can close the door. And then the last thing I want to say before I close this video off is that no matter what you're getting, it doesn't matter if it's something like this or some kind of propane stove, a mini propane little camp stove that's just a single burner, a double burner camp stove, whatever it is you're getting as your backup cook source. And I say this a lot about other things as well. That includes if you're buying or making your own freeze dried goods or dehydrated goods or you're stocking up on different types of dairy powders or whatever, or making the powders yourself like the squash powder, pumpkin powder, orange peel powder. Don't just put that stuff away for doomsday. Don't just put your stoves away for doomsday. Start using them right now and get familiar with them. Right now we still have public power. As most of you know, we're partially off grid with the with our different off-grid things with the wood stove and the treadle machine and the solar power but we're also still on grid so we're using the best of both worlds right now but we're also as set up as we can be to run completely off grid if we absolutely need to and so just like i could use the hot water out of the tank to wash my dishes with but instead as long as I have a fire going, I use the water I keep on the wood stove. That not only saves us a little money in electricity and keeping that, having to keep heating that uh, hot water tank, it also keeps me practiced at using that, just like cooking and baking on the wood stove. Yes, I have a toaster oven I can plug into public power in the wintertime. I have a conventional oven and stove top, but this time of year, I rely mostly on the wood stove more than anything, and I'm always learning more so i'm not only saving electricity i'm constantly getting the practice same thing goes with this i'm going to keep using it for baking in now i do have a quicker way to do biscuits on top of the wood stove i think i show it in that video on how to use the wood stove for cooking and baking uh, so i'd probably keep doing the biscuits on there but as far as like the loaf bread definitely i'd be doing this any kind of a bread like that i'd be using this because it's just going to do a much better job than I can do in even a cast iron Dutch oven on top of the wood stove. I've tried that too. It just doesn't brown the same way like this does here. Got to practice with your stuff. Don't put your stuff away for doomsday. Use it now because you don't know if doomsday is going to be tomorrow. And if you're not practiced up, you're just going to be adding a lot more stress to yourself on top of whatever your personal grid down situation is. So remember, I always talk in personal grid down, even if it could be a nationwide, countrywide, citywide grid down situation and grid down being very general, not just talking about the power, but talking about whatever is going on in your life, it might only affect your house. And I've told that story before about a family member who lost electricity in her house for like two weeks, but it was just them. It was just their house because there were some issues with the electrical and that didn't affect everyone else, but it did affect them. So you got to be prepared. You never know what can happen. And so it's, it's not all about doomsday. It's not all about zombie apocalypses. It's about the everyday things that happen to people all over the place at any given time. All right, now we've got a big storm going on outside. Our power could go out any second. And we're ready though. We've got a good hot fire going in the wood stove. Our house is warm. I've got the laundry drying in there. I'm all set. So anyway, I'm excited about this. I'm very pleased with my purchase. It was a little 
I was a little nervous at first thinking, oh man, did I waste my money on this? But the more I work with it, the more happy I am with it. So you just gotta remember, don't give up after the first try if it's a failure. Keep working with it and just keep using some ingenuity to figure out how to make it work best for you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any thoughts you'd like to share about off-grid cooking and what you use, what are some backup sources you have? Do you have a stovetop oven like this or something else? What do you think about it? because it's always great to get input from all sides so we can all learn from each other. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.